It's the Wayne County Football Show with Marshall Wood and head football coach Jack Hankins. Brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, and First State Bank. All the information you need for Wayne County football. Welcome to our show tonight, Coach Jack Hankins. You doing okay today, Coach? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Good to be here. Well, we always appreciate the time. I know you're like a line for that movie, uh, Top Gun, years ago, running Mach 1 with your hair on fire. I know you are. Always something to do. <laughs> but I uh, appreciate your time. But on our last show, we took another direction as we moved into talking about the game of football, terminology, formation, strategies, and such. We hit the defensive side of the ball last time, and we're going to get to offense this week. But first, anything you can think of that you wanted to say about our defense uh, uh, last week or, or about defense but did not get yeah, to Yeah, well, just maybe. We'll end it with this. You know, we talked a good bit about it. We want our guys to swarm. Uh, we want to attack and be relentless. And, and and the main thing we talked to our guys about, you know, good defenses, they do all of this. But you want to limit the big play. You know, we talk about it. Do not give up the big play. And if you think about last year, we probably – and I was talking to Coach Cooley about this. And you take away probably five plays – we may shut out most of our opponents. You know, there's a you know one or two big plays in the Hattiesburg. You know, one or two big plays. There, there's just one or two big plays in the games we lost that we knocked them out. They're not even close games. Um, great defenses, they do not give up the big play. And I know we didn't get to that. We're kind of winding down last week with our time, but. That, that's all I wanted to say about our defense. Now, I want to ask you about this. And I've sure. heard that talked about before, and this may not be a question that, that there's a specific answer to. I mean, but, you know, how do you – can you coach that, or is that just a mental thing? I, well, yeah, you, you do coach it, and it is a mental thing. On those plays, yeah. we weren't in the position we were supposed to be in. It, it goes back to Bill Belichick and the Patriots way, and that's – you know, you go in that facility, and they've got one sign that says, do your job. And, you know, we we didn't – at that time, we didn't do our job. I, I think you can coach it, and I think players mentally have to buy into that. Uh, you know, if you got the deep third and, and you got your guy just running back, you better turn and run, you know, and you better not lose your leverage, you know, on the run game. There, There's things that, that definitely you can coach and that players mentally get, and, and I think we'll be better at this this year, you know, and we'll be – We'll be a lot better at it. There's a you know a defense with swag. I go back and I talk about what what I know, which isn't much, but I can go back in the history of Wayne County football and I look at the defensive side of the ball and I can see when we had some of our best defenses. You know, I like to watch the Nature Channel. You mm -hmm. know, absolutely. And, I, and I'm talking about I, when I have seen some of these defenses in the past play. Have you ever watched hyenas? Attack. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, just mm -hmm. ripping and tearing and yeah. snatching and pushing and shoving, That's right. just vicious. Man. That's right. We used to break the huddle on swarm. You know, we're you know ready to swarm. Yeah. Because we we did like the um the, there's you seen the Africanized bees at that swarm. <laughs> you know, if one of them hits you, they release a pheromone, and about a thousand others attack. You know, that's kind of the way we want it to be. We want to be just relentless to the point to where we just all get in there and all swarm to the football. Well, you've got some guys with that mentality. That's where we're getting there. I yeah. think it'll be better. I, I hope it'll be better in year two and yeah. get some guys that can run there. And yeah. that, that's that's a lot of fun when you see defenses doing that. That's a lot of fun. Yes, it is. Well, listen, let's uh, let's we kind of beat that defensive horse pretty good this, this last couple of shows. But now let's move our attention to the offensive uh, side of the line of scrimmage, philosophy, strategies, terminology, and anything. Got a blank canvas? Sure. Start painting, coach. I got you. Okay. Well, the first thing you know, everybody says, well, what? You know, I know when I, when I first got here, I said, you, you ain't going to run that old wing tee, are you? It's like, no, you know, we're probably not going to be. The, the main thing, Marshall, is we want to be versatile, as everybody does. Yeah. Um, you got to have something you hang your hat on. You got to have an identity. Uh, we want to be known that we want to run the football. Marshall, we want to be able to put our hand in the dirt, and we want to be able to hit you in the mouth and move the line of scrimmage. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, we did not do that well this year. You, you, you're talking about something. You go about pushing and establishing that line of scrimmage. You're talking about strength. You are. And, you know, I wanted to hit this. I meant to address it earlier. But, you, you, you know, last year, if I, you correct me if I'm wrong, you had one guy mm -hmm. that could bench 300. That's right. Braxton Pitts, our center. You're yeah. right. right. We had one guy. Now, this year. You know, we've been posting some of the max list sure. attempts on Facebook. Well, we got four or five of them at 300? What we do, and we got several. I know I've seen three. We've got three over 300 now, and we've got um, 
probably five, well, I'm sorry, four over 300, and probably five or six right there around the 285, 295 range. So we're, we are getting stronger. Um, it's a physical football game. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a physical game. It tell requires you strength. 5A football in South Mississippi is some of the best football in the nation. I take these guys anywhere, and you dead gum right. It's physical, and it's fast, and if you don't have strength, then you will get pushed around, and you will get beat around because there's nothing weak about football in the state of Mississippi. Yeah. You know, it's, people talk about a finesse game, offensively and finesse, but it gets down to that trench, man. That's just man yeah. on man pushing yeah. folks out of the way. I probably destroyed your chain of thought there, but, you know, I, it is exciting to know that we are getting stronger. That's right. And that they're even going to be, you know, we still got a long way to go season. They said, how strong oh, are going to be <laughs> Well, I hope so. And But I told somebody this morning, we we, I won't, we had a uh, – we had a, a high ceiling. We had we had room to improve, yeah. and because of our kids and their work ethic, we are improving. Yeah, um, it's all on them. They're buying in. They're showing up every day, and uh, they're the ones getting better. They're seeing uh, fruits of their labor, yeah. um, so to speak. But um, let's get back on topic. My bad. Right. I appreciate that. Back to offense. All right. Uh, as we said, I think we said for, we want to be able to put our hand in the dirt and move the line of scrimmage. But um, you know, you know, here's the thing. Everybody thinks it's a bad thing. Punting the football is not a bad thing. So so let's talk about that a little bit. Now, philosophy-wise, you did ask me about that. We would like to run eight plays before we have to give the ball back up. Now, don't get me wrong. If we score in two, three, or four, we'll, we'll take the score whenever we can get it. But you know, when you're playing good teams like we play, the Brookhavens and all them guys, you, you better be glad to get yards and move the chains when you can. You know what I'm saying? With Brookhaven and Laurel and teams like that. Uh, so, Marshall, we, we would love to run eight plays before we punt because that's going to take some time off the clock. That's important, especially if they've got a great offense. We want to make the game slow and monotonous, and we don't want it to be a two-minute seven-on-seven drill. That's not what we want. We want to control the clock. I know a lot of teams, Hugh Freeze did it when he first came to Ole Miss. Go fast, go fast, go fast. I get it. Gus Malzahn did it when he came to Auburn. Go fast, go fast, go fast. You know, chances and the statistics show the more times you snap the ball, the more times you have a chance to score. That is, that, that's correct. You can't dispute that statistic. But I know also with us coming in and starting last year, I know we weren't um, where we needed to be to where we snapped the ball and go three and out and only use 11 seconds on the clock. That wouldn't be smart football. So all these, all these go fast guys, th- th- that's fine. Now, for us, we want to go fast when we want to go fast. We want to go slow and monotonous when we want to. That's called tempo. We want to control the tempo of the game. We can no huddle at any moment. We can get in a huddle at any moment. I think controlling tempo is more important than going fast. People think you just go fast. Well, you know what? If you just go fast, Marshall, if I'm playing you and you go fast, well, guess what? All you do is go fast. That's your tempo. We will get used to going fast if you just go slow. But, you know, like we did it last I was thinking about Laurel, you know, for a long time. You know, we had to lead at halftime, had to lead there a little bit in the third quarter. You know, we wanted to go slow. Well, bam, they popped out there and they got the lead. Well, we went fast and we went down there and scored real quick, you know. So it's kind of a, a tempo thing. And we will – my goal is to be better at that next year, controlling the tempo. Um, I think we, we, went, we went slow this year for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a tempo thing. It's it's just not about going fast yeah. to go fast. Yeah. Um, I want to control the tempo of the game, not just go fast. But uh, anyway, the second thing, you know, talking about them eight plays, I think you and I talked about it a while back. I don't know if you remember against Brookhaven, who was really a, a superior football team to us last year. If you remember in the first quarter, we got the ball and we ran 18 plays and we scored, and I think they got the ball back well, maybe, what, a minute it, and a half to go in the first quarter. Right at it. We had took 18 plays in the entire first quarter, and I know it wasn't but two or three or four a pop, but, you know, then we scored on the 20-yard touchdown pass at the end of that drive. That was a good drive. In that game, we had another 14-play drive, too, that, man, when you're doing that, you're keeping their offense off the field. They can't score if they ain't got the ball. Um and but I here's think the big deal is is defensive side where the, the defensive guys wear out quicker than offensive guys, and I, my my deal is probably they do because those up front they've got to be they got to be covering yeah, ground. I think they do for mm-hmm. this reason. 
and, and people lose track of this, um, Marshall, it gets tiresome rushing the quarterback every single play, especially yeah. if you're in a spread offense. Especially if you got to put your hand out. You're doing you're coming off the ball and you're doing a sprint every single play. And I think that does wear them down, you know. And those guys are usually your bigger guy. I heard Nick Saban say it a long time ago. You know, the big guys, once they get tired, they're tired and they're probably done for the they they never really recover as quick as the smaller guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you take these small guys, they can run around, they can run an eighty yard touchdown play. You know, they may sit down for a couple plays, they get the second win, they're back ready to go. It don't phase in. You let that happen with a three hundred pounder, you may not get that sucker back for for a while, you know. Um that's that's just part of mm-hmm. being a big guy, you yeah. know, they don't just recover as quick. Um but here, here's something else we want. We want every offensive drive to end with a kick. All right, so you think about it. Every drive ends with a kick. Well, here, here's the optimal goal. Yes, do we want it to end with a PAT? Absolutely. That means that's point after touchdown. Yeah. We just scored. Yeah. Do we want it to end with a field goal? Absolutely. We, we'll take those threes as well. Do we want it to end with a punt? Well, we wanted to score, but if it ends with a kick, if every drive ends with a kick, we're meeting our master goal, and that's one thing we talked about, of no turnovers. If every drive ends with a kick, that means we hadn't thrown a pick and we hadn't laid that thing on the ground. And, and a turnover, an interception, is a huge momentum swinging thing during the football game that you want to try to avoid, and that's something that's in our control because we work on ball security. Mm-hmm. We work on making the right reads and not throwing interceptions. We work on those things, and they still happen. Yeah. You know, we're all human. I mean, our referees are human. Yeah. Coaches are human. Kids are human. We all, Those things happen. But that's something that we can control, and we can hang on to the ball because we, we're doing it the proper way. So if every drive ends with a kick, we don't turn it over. And that's a positive thing. Remember, I started the whole thing by saying a punt's not bad. Yeah. A punt's not bad. Especially you got somebody like Braden yeah. that can kick the ball 40, 50 yards down the field every time. Yeah. So that's that's um I think that's important. I think that's that's a really a, a philosophy behind what we do and, and why we do the speeds of the game that we do. So that's kind of where we are with it. I want this is a good stopping point, coach, to hear from some of our sponsors. We're gonna take a break, folks, and hear from some of the folks that help make this possible. And uh, when you see these folks around town, let them know how much you appreciate them. So Coach Hankins and I are gonna break and we'll be back in just a minute to wrap this thing up. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, Extreme Guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, Extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories, and we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. Once you start banking online, it all just starts to click. You get e-statements, online bill pay, 24-7 access, your whole financial picture right on your screen. Plus, with our bank, you get the local support you need to make it all work. Get clicking with online banking today. First State Bank, a better way to bank. Member FDIC. Online at firststatebnk.com. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you with the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. 
so much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generate generators that are quieter than a Honda. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located 1510 SLU Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5 and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Coach, sorry for the time out there, but we have to take them periodically. Every you know night, how that works. You gotta have one. You gotta have one every now and then. Uh, let's get to running again. All right. What you got? I'm glad you didn't fuss at me in that time, man. <laughs> Sometimes we have to get a little correction going on. We, we, our timeouts are pretty good. We, we drink a little bit of drink and go on by. There business. we go. There we go. Um, but offensively, Marshall, just to finish up, that that's kind of where we are, obviously. You know, you, you you want to beat people, and, and today's game's turned into an offensive game. And, and you know, Marshall, we're not going to get into wing, T, spread stuff. We try to be multiple, and we try to uh, – you and I talked about that, a little bit about this a couple months ago. To me, as a play caller and offensively, it's formations. Um, formationally, we, we, we want to put people in a bind, know what they're running, Know where they put their extra player or their hang player. Can you get a, can you get a, you know, think about football. Now there's 11 men on the field, right? Yeah. So it's not an even number. So based on a formation, you can actually get them to where they may have six on one side of the field rather than five. Or if they got two safeties, how do they cover? Where do they play their back? Are they going to take a guy out of the box versus this formation? So we really want to see what they're doing. And, um, Marshall, that's, you know, that's the second biggest thing is can this formation put them in a bind? When you run a play, you would love, and this is this is a perfect scenario, we call it being man-on-man -man plus ball. So if I'm blocking you, if me and you are going against each other, man-on-man, -man, and I have my ball carrier behind me, I have the advantage yeah. because I have a plus-one situation. And we try to call plays, and then you may say, "Well, if you did that every play, everyone would be working." Well, first you got to whoop the man in front of you. That's the, you know, that's that's the here you go. You got to win that block. You got to win your one on ones. So we want to call plays. We're man on man, plus one, and that plus one is our ball carrier. If we can get them in those formations to give us an advantage, and and we did that. And I don't want to call out games or formations where we we we, we weren't um. Good enough at times last year just to just to move people like we wanted to. We had to trick them a little bit, and some of that was with formations and and, and maybe maybe you catch a team that don't adjust as well, or or maybe that guy's so good on defense that we may need to on our side to block that one and yeah. and give him help, whether it be from cracking from a guy in motion or or get a guy in the route for either from the backfield. You can outnumber them from the backfield or motion the guy. So so formations and. Man, that's a, that's a huge thing of what we do. And I think you and I talked about it a little yeah. bit, you know, when we had this series, we talked about our play script. You know, we'll mm -hmm. script about 10 or 12 plays. Mm -hmm. Out of that 10 or 12 plays, we're going to run many different formations early to kind of see how they adjust, and we kind of log that in. And, and we want to see now, all right, say maybe this for, I don't know, let's just say something. All right, trips. This trips formation gives us a little bit of success because they may play their hang player way inside, or they may take a safety and drop him way outside. So we really want to see if we can get an advantage by our f formation. Mm -hmm. Folks, I'm telling you, this is what we're looking for here. Uh, this is not football 101. This is <laughs> this is kind of stepping up the ante a little bit, Coach. We appreciate this. This yeah. is good stuff. Man. This is a lot of fun, man. Yeah. This is what we do. This is why you watch film as a staff and as a coach. And, and the iPads and the huddle, the, the operating system we use now, yeah. has changed the whole thing. Again, we've talked about it before. Yeah. I remember beating the roads down, traveling, getting – but you, you can now watch film a lot. And, and the main thing is trying to see where they – you know, see where they're going to line up to you. And um, if you can get 
and one thing and get that plus one advantage, you know, here, well, let's use Isaiah and Choi, isn't it? Wouldn't you love for them to be one-on-one -on -one plus one? They're your plus one. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I know the guy from Laurel, when they get in a situation where he's a plus one, I mean, you know, those guys, they trouble. make people miss. <clears throat> we tell our running backs, we're going to get you to the safety, you know, because you can't account for all of them. You can't account for the safety or the deep corner or wherever. The, we're going to get you safe. Now, your job is to beat, your job is to beat that safety one-on-one. -on -one. You know, they do a good job. I just think I think back to the Brookhaven game uh, in overtime, you know, where, where we got Isaiah to that safety there yeah. on the and, and, and he beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And that's where your good players come through and they shine through. You know, they you know, you don't ask a guy to beat two or three players at one time. Well, that's 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 not even logistically possible with the numbers and things, you know. Yeah. Um the good book tells us two's better than one, right? Amen. So if we can get our guys Man on man plus one. That's kind of where we want to put them. Yeah. Coach, uh, you think you have addressed as part of this? You know that you want to address offensively. You think you know, we got the defense pretty much wrapped up? Are you you pretty satisfied with with sharing with what you've done? Yeah, you I know? think I think we are. Okay. I know people. They may want to hear us talk about throwing the ball forty times a game. <laughs> but well, um, I, I was not. A, go ahead. No, you know, <clears throat> and I'm going to say this, and and. and I may have said it, but you know, we'll say it again in a previous show. I'm getting old. I, I overlap myself a lot, but some things bear repeating. You know, I heard people talking about it around. Well, we don't, you know, wing T, wing T. We don't want this. We don't want this. You know, we want to get our kids in space and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. And you know, because it helps them get ready for the next level. Well, there's a little mm -hmm. old school over there in Jefferson Davis County that's won a bunch of state championships running this kind of offense, and they mm -hmm. had nine D one players on wow. D one rosters at one time. It's about three or four years ago. Wow. But nine out of Bassfield slash Jefferson yeah. Davis County, small school, not as big as Wayne County, they had nine mm. D one players. That that's um that is amazing. You know, so if it, it doesn't matter mm. what I from as far as playing at the next level, you can if you're good, you're gonna Absolutely. make it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you know, we're talking about the wing team, we're not we're not just a um let me say we're we're not a, a strict wing T team. Mm -hmm. Y'all seen us. We've we're actually been in a shotgun. I think we did the numbers. I think we were in a shotgun sixty four percent of the time this year. I think it was over half. Yeah, it was, it was over half. Yeah. Uh, we, we can we all those numbers in the computer. We but yeah, we were in a shotgun a lot more. Um, you know, we we again it goes back Marshall to being multiple and, and can we get and can our kids get in these formations to give us a chance to be successful and that that's the main thing. Well, Coach, I believe if anybody can get them there, you and your staff can do it. And you know what we hear in the background, don't you? That old is bell. That, is that the bell That's ringing? That's the old bell ringing. It's blowing, so we got to go. Remember to follow War Eagle Football on Facebook at War Eagle Football and on YouTube at Wayne County High School War Eagle Football. Let me encourage you to find a way to get involved with the program. We need you to be, and you will enjoy it. But for now, Coach Jack Hankins, War Eagle Football, and myself, we out. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, extreme guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories and we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. Once you start banking online, it all just starts to click. You get e-statements, online bill pay, 24-7 access, your whole financial picture right on your screen. Plus, with our bank, you get the local support you need to make it all work. Get clicking with online banking today. First State Bank, a better way to bank. Member FDIC. Online at firststatebnk.com. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you. 
and because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generate generators that are quieter than a Honda. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located at 1510 SLU Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5 and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. Thanks for listening to Wayne County Football Show, brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, and First State Bank.